Hey everybody, welcome back to the Miser's Guide to Ebony. In this video, I'm going to be looking at a 466.7 million power account on a very new server. I think it is, uh, oh, I'll just take a quick look here. I think it's in the 900s. Yeah, 992. So almost server 1000, so it's very, very new. They've not had any server versus servers, uh, battlefields or anything. And uh, the player is well advanced on the server and wants to get some advice, and, you know, just on uh, progression and getting ready for server versus server and PVP combat and all that uh, so that they don't lose their investment because Really, at this point, it is an investment. You've put a lot of work, you put a lot of time and a lot of money into the account, and you really want to make sure that you do the right thing. So it makes sense to have a consultation here with uh, somebody that has been around for quite a bit longer. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I did have a conversation with the account owner of this account uh, about the goals and the, uh, the hopes of what they want to accomplish. So with that in mind, I'm going to look through the account and see where we can, you know, make some uh, some observations, provide some feedback, some direction for growth. I've already had uh, several conversations with this player and we've talked about some things, uh, but for the benefit of this video, I will go through some of that as well. So let's first just take a quick peek around. It is right now a keep 35. Um, Nice keep 35. A lot of buildings are at 35. Not all of them necessarily have to be there just yet, but uh, you know they will have to be at some point for requirements. So yeah, no, everything is looking good in terms of buildings. The resources, well, the in-city tiles are, some of them are really far along. Some of them are lagging behind. Like I see some, I'm going to zoom in a bit here because it's a little bit too far zoomed out. These ones that are 25, 26, it's really easy to pump those up to at, I would say a minimum of 30 to have some better sustainability in terms of uh, resource production. Um, I, would, I would definitely suggest building these up to 30 first before moving on to the 32s and the 34s and so on. Yeah, you have to have one that is built up of each type, but you don't necessarily have to have all of these ones. Um, the reason for that, that I'm say saying that you should build up these 25s and 26s is because you get a faster return. Like the, uh, the amount of benefit that you have for leveling that up, the output increases uh, more for the amount that you spend uh, with, with these earlier level ones. Um, and all of them over time will be worthwhile to have have been upgraded, but uh, you get a faster return on the smaller ones, so you definitely want to keep them up. And uh, 30 is a good place to, to get to at the very minimum. Um, so yeah, all these 25s, it doesn't take much, just uh, push those for sure, and that will bring that production up. Um, I know that the player says they don't really have any alts, so they're relying on their... Uh, their in-city production, their gathering and all that, and spending to be uh, to, to get enough resources. And the resource costs for the buildings that are coming up are astronomical. It's very important to have a really solid economy to keep that going. Um, resource production isn't so bad. It's, it's pretty decent, actually. Um, but yeah, it can definitely be improved by just bringing some of those in-city tiles up. Uh, let's look around at some other buildings. First off, I noticed that the Academy is 35. That is an excellent choice to get that up uh, early so that you can unlock research. Let's take a quick look at your research. Um, your gathering is great. In-city production is good. So you, that's probably why those numbers were so high because uh, all that is fully built. Yeah, all the advancement tab is excellent. Not too much to worry about in the defense tab. I want to make sure you have the important stuff though. You've got... Uh, Defending troop attack, yes. So you got those buffs. There's a lot of ones that are maxed out here that didn't necessarily need to be maxed out, but 
Uh, they are, so it's not like it hurts or anything. Yes, these are good. Uh, definitely want to get this one done. Wrap that up. Uh, you you want to have all your uh, in-city buffs in this tree done. That should be a priority, as well as these three. So this one's already done. You want to get these two up as quickly as possible. Let's look in the military tab. There's If you're getting ready for uh, server versus server, you want to make sure that this is pretty much decked out. And it looks like it is. So far scrolling through, I don't see any issues in this tab. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all done. Nothing to worry about there. Medical aid. Let's start at the beginning. Okay, so because you're only 466 power, and I'm, I'm guessing that by the time, I think it was three weeks they said they had uh, until their server was the server. So I'm guessing the player will be somewhere around 1 billion by that point. Um, and if you don't want to lose on your investment, you want to definitely make sure that you have uh, all your hospital capacity built up just in case. I mean, you you never plan to get hit. You never plan to lose troops, but it, it's better to have that there as a just in case situation. You can't like the hospital will not carry anyone that is 10 billion power. I mean, you're going to lose way too many troops, but if you're only 1 billion power, if your hospital is big enough and you get hit, you're going to be able to, sorry, that's a squeaky chair now. Uh, you're going to be able to recover almost everything. Build up that hospital scale. Uh, build up that hospital scale. And uh, the player also, this is a kind of side conversation. The player also let me know that they're, they're not planning to be very offensive on the world map, like with their server um, and probably not even server versus server. They probably just want to get the wings and not worry so much about it. So if you are really not going to be a super offensive person, then you don't really need to worry quite as much about building these up. You can probably get enough points just by taking uh, temples and, and running points that way. Uh, but eventually you're going to want to get those. I, I'm just saying that uh, in terms of these medical aid ones, they're probably less important right now than making sure that you get your hospital up, uh, your lighter server war up, and yeah, hospital scale. Yeah, you want to get those things up just as the just in case kind of thing. Uh, but most importantly, you're going to want to increase your buffs in every way. You've got your military all built out. That is perfect. Um, I hope, I'm hoping that the military advance is going to be similar. This is probably where most of your work needs to get done. I can already tell that uh, there's a lot of work to do here, just all the green that I saw. This is huge. Um, this is going to be the most effective tree for what you're trying to accomplish. So you're going to want to build these up. This is, yep, yeah, this needs to be built up. Uh, this needs to be built up. I wouldn't worry so much about the siege ones. If you have to choose on a newer server, uh, worry less about your siege right now and concentrate on your ranged and your ground and getting those up high. Uh, it looks like your mounted is already up because you have been doing bosses and so on. This is another area that you're going to want to focus on. The opponents that you're going to be facing in a very early server versus server are not likely going to be all built out with uh, with buffs that are huge that you have to worry about. There will be some players that are similar or stronger. Um, so for those players, if you have to encounter them, you're going to want to have strong debuffs. You can get some of that here, some of that through gear. But realistically, if you're looking for just wings in server versus server, then you're probably going to be looking for easy points off of smaller keeps and through temples. So you don't need to worry about getting max debuffs, but you definitely want to find a way to have some debuffs. Um, and preferably through subordinate city gear. You can worry about these ones after. Uh, in, in terms of this tree, focus more on increasing your buffs right now and then go to the debuffs, I would say, uh, if, you, if you're looking for a priority there. Um, because th the reason I'm saying that is because most of the players on these newer servers have not 
gotten to the point where they can build up their Achaemenidae and uh, outfit all of their subordinate city uh, generals and so on. So they won't have the debuffs to stop you if you increase your buffs. Uh, whereas the debuffs are a situational thing. Maybe you'll play against a player that you'll need it for, but the chances are much, much smaller than the benefit you'll get from increasing your own. So definitely focus on your own there. Um, same thing here. Don't worry about the training speed and so on. That's an afterthought uh, for the future. Uh, just focus more on anything like this that increases your own buffs, especially for ranged and ground, and you've already got cavalry. The, the three main ones. Uh, siege you'll worry about later when uh, you're, you're starting to face bigger targets, but right now focus on mostly archer and your ground, I would say. Okay, let's look at some of these other ones. Um, for service to server, your holy palace doesn't mean a whole lot. So let's not worry about that one at all. Here's some important ones. Um, well, not this. Almost everything in this tree is going to be useless, except for these. This, definitely get that. Uh, out of everything I've seen, this is your number one priority in terms of research. Get these done. Uh, this is so important because this percentage buff applies to the number of subordinate cities you have. You have nine subordinate cities. So when you increase that, you're increasing the percentage times the number of subordinate cities that you own when they're in battle. So even at the level one, that's 9% troop attack. 9% troop attack of every troop type. And then you increase it to the second level, that's now 18%, okay? So that makes a big difference. And then you have more down here. So you have the advanced ones. Advanced in city HP, defense, attack. And then you have super in city attack that probably less important than these ones, or well, no, these are in city too. Less important than the, oh, they're all in city. What am I talking about? But I'm thinking about something else. Those are all super important. Regardless, even if they are uh, in city, you need those. Absolutely. If somebody comes and hits you, you want to have as much of your buffs increased as possible. Uh, da, da, da. Going down through here. What did I click? This is Alliance tab. Judging by what I saw in your alliance, it's a pretty small alliance for those of you that are not the person that is the owner of this account. It's a very small alliance. Uh, they'll have very small embassies, which means reinforcing isn't probably the best way to be getting troop or getting points. Not that it is these days at all anyway. Um, so you don't really need to worry so much about this stuff just yet. Um, I did say in previous videos that these reinforcing mounted troop attacks, like these things, Back when I did them, they actually counted towards your own troops. For some reason, the game said that reinforcing troops also, you know, for some reason, I, I, it, it didn't make sense, but it was confirmed that uh, your own troops in your own city when you were attacked were benefited by these. But I did receive some people, uh, some, some people's messages that said that that's no longer the case. I haven't confirmed or not. Um, but, uh, that is a consideration there. Um, but it's less of a priority than the just straight up bonuses that you get from some of the other areas. So the reinforcing ones probably get them, but prioritize them a little bit lower than the other stuff. Okay. That is research. Lots to talk about the research there. Let's look at just buildings in general. Like what should he focus on next? Well, to start with buildings, I want to talk about military buildings. So first, I need to look at the actual troops. Only one tier 14 has been unlocked, and that's cavalry, which is extremely vulnerable, uh, especially without any backup. I mean, you don't have too much cavalry. You just have too little of everything else. So at this point, don't build any more cavalry. 
Do not build any tier 14 or tier 13. Work with what you've got and you need to build up your other stuff. Um, I'm seeing that you have the start of some layers, but there's a lot of work to do in terms of, uh, yeah, in, in, all your true power seems to be just cavalry. So that is a huge growth area right there. You need to work on your troop count and to do so, you're going to want to unlock your tier 14s and your tier 13s. So your barracks is at 27. That has to go up. Uh, that has to go up to 35 so that you can get your unlocks. Archer camp is at 29, same thing. You need to get that up to 35. Stables is already there. Workshop, you're going to want to get to 35 too, but you don't, oh, you're, you're almost there. That's a small push for that one. Um, but you don't need to necessarily build up a huge army of siege. Just make sure that there is a decent amount of them. The hardest one of those three for you to build up will be Archer Camp because you have to, you have, it has the worst prerequisites. Um, it just sucks. But once you get it done, it's a good feeling. So you're going to want to get that done, and uh, and then we can start to worry about your troops, getting those layers, and building up some solid troops for attacking and for defense. Uh, you don't want to leave those. Those cavalry are so vulnerable right now. Super, Even a small player, a smaller player that even a hundred million power player that sends an archer attack at you will wipe that out. They're super vulnerable. So you need to make sure that those are protected. And yes, you can ghost. Yes, you can ghost your cavalry and you can do, you know, you can ghost most of it and you can manage to get points and stuff. But what happens if uh, the Wi-Fi cuts out or what happened? You know, you, you got to make those, those realizations that you're not in control of everything on an internet game. So things happen and anything could happen. And one small mistake could lead to a big, big loss. And nobody wants to see that except the player that hits you. Okay. Um, so we talked about some of the building priorities. We talked about a lot of the research priorities. Let's take a look at generals. Okay, Martinez is a pretty decent general. He's already nearly fully specialized. So that is potentially a good PvP cavalry option. Um, although I wouldn't say do too much PvP cavalry uh, if you don't know what you're doing and your buffs aren't extremely strong. So maybe keep that for testing in battlefield so you can kind of understand how that works. Um, lots of duty officers from what I remember. So got most of what you need in all the duty officers. Uh, siege, sure. One thing that I did talk about with this player is they had a lot of Jeffersons because they wanted to build up their subordinate cities. And that was a learning, a learning thing. They had great subordinate cities, uh, but the hard thing to understand is the level of your subordinate cities doesn't matter very much. It really doesn't. What matters is the culture, the quality of your subordinate cities, and the general and the general's equipment. That's it, really. The level of your subordinate city, the only thing that it really affects is the troops that are produced in there, and the troops are not really effective. They're just not. They're always many tiers below, and they're just in such small quantities that they're basically just some layer padding. They're, they're not good. And they're, you know, they're just not good. So don't worry so much about those. Uh, you, I mean, if, you, if you're on a very peaceful server, go ahead and leave those Jeffersons for, for now. But when you start Battlefield and server versus server in a few weeks, don't even bother with them. Don't even put them back on because if you forget, that won't be good. You need to put your good subordinate city generals on there and it not only is a good way to level generals up but you just need those debuffs and you need the uh the debuffs through the equipment as well so you got to make sure you have your subordinate cities set up very well 
And like I said earlier, the debuffs aren't going to be as big a deal on newer servers just yet, but they do matter. You want to debuff every player that you come across by 50% of whatever their value is. And it's incredibly hard to do that on the older servers where people have uh, buffs that are in the 2000s. <sighs> but right now, you can do it. And you can control the battlefield in that way. I see a William Marshall right here, and I did talk about uh, using William Marshall as a wall general who is an excellent choice. Lots of really well-rounded uh, stats here. It, very quality general. Um, so to get some equipment for him set up here, some skill books would be excellent. If you can work on his specialty, that's awesome too. Star him up. Uh, get him as high as you can through skill books in terms of level. And make sure you get him on your wall before you do any anything PvP. Um, one other thing that we did talk about is I, I can't remember where I saw your gear, which general was holding your gear. Was it on Shajar right now? You have some stuff on Theodora. Okay, so this is what I mean. So uh, the gear right now is a mix because without having unlocked server versus server and battlefields and so on, Ares gear has not been unlocked at all. So the choices are Dragon Gear, Achaemenide, and Civilization. And you've got some Civilization pieces, but the refining on them is very limited. So if you're looking at places or gear to refine, start here. Get these pieces refined for whatever their purpose is going to be. Like if, if this is your civilization piece for your cavalry general, this should be the piece that you are going to be focusing your refining on because the cap is higher than everything else. Uh, dragon gear is just a waste because it's going to get turned into Ares and then the cap is going to increase. You're going to have to do it all over again. But your Han here, that one should be refined. That is where you should focus. So civilization gear is where you're going to want to focus your refining right now. And then if you have extra left over and you're trying to prep, then you can do a little bit on the Ecumenidae pieces that you're using on your PvP generals for now. Just keep in mind that most of it is going to be replaced, at least on your PvP generals, most of it is going to be replaced by Civ gear or Ares gear, uh, just because the Ecumenidae gear is mostly uh, oriented for your subordinate city generals. So which don't need any refining at all, that you, you just care about the basic attributes. Um, so that's some talk about gear. Uh, I saw gear on your Theodora, so for cavalry, but I haven't seen anything made for the wall general uh, at all. Maybe there's something on here. Shajar has chest and eh, like, no, none of this is really useful. So you might, unless you have some other stuff locked away, you're going to look for uh, creating a set for your wall general to have uh, that is pretty well rounded. In I mean, you can have you can have a mix of uh, mounted, mostly like HP. Um, you can put uh, ground HP, defense, and archer attack like you can have a mix of every troop type and it doesn't necessarily have to be percentages if you have really high whole numbers keep those uh excellent on the wall general but you're going to want to probably for now outfit completely an ecumenity set so look at your options and put that on because that way you can refine it uh to the maximum that you can except for, you know, sieve is a little bit higher. Uh, but you might want to use your sieve on something else. I don't know. I, I haven't looked at what pieces you have. Um, but for any non sieve piece, you're going to want to have Acumenide for your wall general. And and really, if you can get six piece Acumenide on a lot of your, uh, your subordinate city generals, I don't know how many scrolls you have, but if you can get quite a few not many, 
Uh, the more pieces you can get, the more debuffs, the better off you will be. So that should definitely be a focus as well. All right. What else can we talk about here? You are keep 35. So one of the questions was, do I keep chugging away? Do I go to keep 36 and beyond? Or do I stay at keep 35 for now? And my opinion here was, especially if your goals are to be successful in uh, battlefields and server versus server and so on, start here. Stay at 35 for a little bit. Yes, you have the ability to move to 36, but stay at 35 for a little bit. Build up your wall general. Build up some basic PvP generals for your ground and your archer. Get that stuff going. Uh, build some basic troops so that you have some layers and something that you can march with. And then you can worry about moving to 36 and unlocking the uh, military academy and, and, and all that stuff. That's all good, but it's not as effective when you don't have the generals built up and you don't have troops. So uh, definitely try to get a little bit done on your keep 35, especially since you're so far ahead of most of, most of everybody on these newer things. It shouldn't be that hard of a push on keep 35 to get in the top 100 of battlefields, um, to get a high ranking in server to server and unlock certain things. You can get a lot of your unlocks early before anyone else catches up uh, at this point because you don't have as much competition and that will really increase the value of your account. You can get some of the extra dragons and so on, uh, potentially get into the all-stars when it opens up for your continent. Yeah, there's, there's a lot that could happen if you uh, build it up right now. If you build it up to keep 36, 37, 38, you're just delaying your growth. You will be stronger in the end, but you might have missed out on some of those opportunities. So that's that, that was my recommendation. Spend a little bit of time here first and then move forward. Um, pasture, let's look at dragons. Both dragons are unlocked. Should be feeding these regularly, trying to get them up. You, you're already working on your Fafnir. Uh, probably work a little more on your Celtic Demon because, uh, yeah, it only level three, you're not getting as much as you could. Um, so you should be feeding this pretty regularly to make sure that uh, it does grow because you're going to be putting that on your PvP Archer General pretty soon. What else? Okay, we've talked about buildings, we've talked about research talked about generals, equipment, dragons, I keep 35, what else? Um, troops, we're good on that. Resources, yeah, we did talk about that. Subordinate cities, I think we did talk about. And they're, they're really decent, they're good choices. Uh, Japan all the way across, a couple legendaries, uh, an epic. Yeah, no, you're in good shape in terms of those. Oh, we did have a conversation about when to do this, like when to turn these on. Um, so with a new server, a lot of people, when they get new subs, they will automatically be linked. And the problem with that for a lot of players is... It makes you vulnerable uh, because if you are porting around on the opposing enemy's server and your subs are linked, all they have to really do if you're a small player is find your sub, even if you're moving around everywhere, find your subordinate cities on your actual server, attack those, and your main city's troops are going to go fight at the subordinate city and they're going to have lower buffs and you'll just get wiped out. Um, so if you are a small player that can't take a solo, uh, you probably should not have that stuff linked. But at the same time, if you are unbubbled and you have it turned off, then somebody could just very easily come by and steal your sub because uh, your main city troops are not fighting. So for example, if he's got his off right now and his bubble drops, somebody might not have the guts to come and hit him in his main city, but they could go over to his... Uh, one of his nice Japans that he has here, hit it 10 times, 
with minimal troops and take it and never give it back. So that's a risk as well. So you got to really think about uh, how you're going to use that to, both offensively to your advantage in these newer servers, but also what if somebody uses that against you as well. Okay. I think we're pretty good here. Where's your forge? I want to see how what kind of gear you could actually make. Because that is one of the priorities is to outfit your subordinate cities. Why can't I find the forge? It's hiding. Trap factory. Bar hall, embassy. Oh, it's right there. <laughs> okay. So Ecumeni Day Rings. Oh, you got lots. You got lots of scrolls. And I'm guessing it's the same for, for the rest. Yeah. So you, you only had a couple chests, but you've got plenty of scrolls to outfit those guys. You just need the equipment. Yeah. So your struggle is not scrolls like many people would be. It's just the actual equipment or the materials is what I mean, not the equipment. So you produce what you can, keep working on uh, accumulating equipment. Why do we keep saying equipment? Materials to build that Ecumenidae and build that up. But first focus on your wall general and get that refined and set up with whatever gear you're putting on there. And then start worrying about the uh, Ecumenidae for your subordinate cities and definitely put proper generals onto your subordinate cities. Okay, I think that is about it for this consultation video. If you are interested in having your own consultation video where I go through your keep and I pick it apart and look for areas that you could grow, give you some feedback and some advice, that sort of thing, uh, just send me an email at themiserevany at gmail.com and I can make that happen. All right, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in a future video.